I think we can pretty much all agree that we are near the top of the sigmoid curve in the development of AI image generations right now. Half a year of progress used to look like this, but for the last six months, there has been no comparable change like what we have experienced before. But now, can you even tell which one is a real image and which one is a fake here? And it is even harder to tell without any fingers or text to nitpick from. However, we are also not completely on top of the sigmoid curve of progress either. AI image generation still has fingers to fix, words to generate, and details to perfect. That's why nitpicking these parts is still the easiest way to identify AI generated images. While people can still easily cover up these faults after the initial generation with techniques like high res fix or image and painting, researchers still can't really call it a day if they can't do it in a single pass because I guess it's just not as satisfying. A simpler solution might just be needed too because there are like a billion workflows and workarounds to configure and generate images right now. And this is definitely not it. So we need a new yet simple backbone, but we cannot get rid of the fusion models since they are the best AI architecture at generating images. Hmm, let's just take whatever else is working and combine them together like AI chatbots with the fusion models. Maybe that will work. Well, that worked. More specifically, the attention mechanism within large language models that powers AI chatbots is actually super useful. For language modeling, we use the attention mechanism in the first place because it let the model attend to multiple locations when generating a word. This is important as it can encode information about the relations between words. For example, the it within the sentence, the chicken didn't cross the road because it was too tired, is obviously referring to the chicken, but without the attention mechanism, the AI wouldn't be able to tell that the it is referring to the chicken since referring to the road is also grammatically correct. So for generating images, if we can have the AI to pay attention to other specific locations, it would be much easier to synthesize the small details like the text or fingers within an image consistently, since there needs to be a very strong relational connection to generate coherently. Which convolutional neural network, or more specifically, the unit that is used for diffusion models, could not provide. So maybe attention is actually all we need. Because if you look at all the current state-of-the-art models, models like Stable Diffusion 3 or even Sora, which is a text-to-video generation model by the way, you would realize that we are pivoting towards Diffusion Transformers, which are introduced in both of them actually, but with slight modifications. However, the whole idea of combining Transformers that have the attention mechanisms with Diffusion models was actually introduced a while ago. And researchers have kind of already known for some time that this will be the state of the art, but no one was willing to take the step of spending millions to train it from the ground up just to confirm it. But luckily, a year later, we finally got to see the results. And not just in text-to-image, but also for text-to-video. For Stable Diffusion 3, while it is still not officially out yet and we only have the technical papers along with the results from Emacs tweets to look at, we can kind of already tell that it is on another level we have not seen before. Keep in mind that this is a base model and its performance has already surpassed a lot of fine-tunes and other pre-existing generation methods. The overall proposed structure for Stable Diffusion 3 is pretty complex too. Shout out to Stable AI for this super detailed diagram by the way, with the introduction of other new techniques like bidirectional information flow and rectify flow that may have improved its capabilities at generating text within images, the fusion transformers still probably play a key role and damn, just look at it generating in 1024 times 1024. It is such an eye bleach with how well it generates the details. Especially for synthesizing complex scenes with the addition of text, SD3 had no problem generating words even in cursive. The only few mistakes it made from the official example was adding an extra s or missing an f in the word diffusion while written in cursive. I cannot confirm it since it's not out but hopefully it's that good. Emad has also claimed that it is the best at understanding complex scene compositions like this photo of a red sphere on top of a blue cube, behind them is a green triangle, and on the right is a dog and on the left is a cat. No other models have been able to accurately generate this before by the way. We have also been teased on their technical paper that SD3's DIT is also a multi model DIT, which means that image generation with SD3 can directly be conditioned on images, which means we would not need control net anymore. But not much information has been shared about this, so I guess we'll see it when SD3 is out. DIT's capability in composition and consistency can also be seen in the latest AI sensation, Sora, a text-to-video AI published by OpenAI. You can check out my old video for some more context. Recently, the key researchers have published some newer results, and oh god, they look way too real. 
and in a recent interview they had with MKBHD, they said that it wouldn't be available anytime soon, but I guess that is pretty reasonable as the general public is definitely not prepared for it. If you don't believe me, just look at how some Facebook users react to AI-generated images. While Sora is super impressive, it is probably not a research marvel that people thought it was, and actually, it might have been an engineering one. You see, the Fusion Transformers have been existing for quite some time, and looking at their technical paper, the most unique part Sora had is adding space-time relation between visual patches that were extracted from the individual frames. So the only new thing is adding space-time relation, because extracting visual patches is already something DIT does. And not much else about the architecture was introduced or added, which may give people ideas that it is not as complicated under the hood. So for Sora to generate images with such high fidelity and coherency, it might have been a work of scaling the compute over tens of thousands of GPUs for just training, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. However, in a recent interview, they did share that it only takes several minutes to generate a video from Sora. Those videos are 720p, 20 seconds long. How long does it take to generate those? It could take a few minutes, depending on the complexity of the prompt. So I might be really wrong here. Maybe the DIT architecture made a big difference, but the compute probably made an even more of a difference by how big of a leap in quality they had compared to previous state-of-the-art like Stable Video Diffusion or Pika Labs. So besides safety issues, maybe the amount of compute required for inference is also one of the reasons why Sora is not available for public use, which resulted in only a handful of demos. Well, these are all speculations relations, it is still a hard fact that DIT may be the next pivotal architecture for media generations. Because not only image generation is being perfected by this architecture, but also video generations. Sora is kind of like a stamp of approval for DIT, which made other DIT-based research like DIFIT from NVIDIA and HDIT from Stability AI hold bigger promises for the future. If you do want me to dive into DIFIT and HDIT, let me know down in the comments. And if you're excited to try out some text to video like Sora but couldn't, today's sponsor Domo AI might actually be a great alternative for you to check out. Domo AI is a Discord-based service that lets you generate videos, edit videos, animate images, and stylize images really easily. I personally have actually been following Domo AI for a while, and they are really good at generating video-to-video -video or image-to-image -image conditioned on text. What this means is that if you give it a video or an image, you can prompt some sort of style for it to reference, and it can generate the video or the image in the style of your prompt. Domo AI is especially good at generating in the style of animation. And that is how I actually found them in the first place. They have a range of customized models for you to pick from, each with different anime or illustration styles you can use and generate with. They are what I've seen so far with the best results while needing the least effort, because if you remember from my old video of how people created AI videos, they had to suffer through a billion workflows while Domo AI can just do it for you all in a few simple steps. Their highlight though is definitely the image animate feature where you can turn images into videos. All you have to do is to provide a starting image, then it'll use that initial image to create a moving sequence for you. Very cool if you want to make a real or AI generated image move. So if you do want to try out Domo AI, you can get started with the link down in the description to join their Discord and start generating. Thank you Domo AI for sponsoring this video. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex Shea, Deegan, Alex Maurice, Mikulim, Fifal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't and I will see y'all in the next one.